Um, welcome to this live session. I will show you very interesting changes in version 22 in the topics meshing and casting. Due to the very limited time, I will try to give you an overview of the new tools and direct method so you can get an idea of where we are going and how we will work from now on with the new direct. The new mesh layout with tool sets, which is now introduced in version 22, provides direct working mode, new mesh functionality, upgraded functions, task-based function grouping, major changing for what? For boosting the user productivity. Before we start, it is necessary to explain you the new changes so that you can follow me for the next live demos. About the direct edit, which is uh, a new functionality with live preview on the result, replacing all mesh improve and manipulation functions in a direct interactive mode, divided into two big categories, the element category and the area category. And according what the user want to manipulate, chooses the category and has at his disposal a direct modification of entity, preview of all actions, entity dependent actions, context menu calling with the right mouse button. After selecting the category uh, elements and hover over an entity, nodes, edges, or uh, elements, user has preview of function assistant on the left side of the screen. And according what type of the three in function assistant is highlighted, it is colored in blue. With tap, user can switch to the different actions inside the category if the corresponding entity is highlighted. What it means, if I hover over the node, I can move the node, I can move it, I can bring it back to the origin. If I hover over the node and press uh, tap, as you can see on the left side in the function assistant, we switch to the next group inside nodes, which is move to normal. If you press again uh, tap, you go back to the first group, left mouse, and you go back to the origin state. The same happens if we are over the edges. We can split an edge. We can uh, split more than one edge by pressing control and travel the mouse over the edges. And here again, if we hover over the edge and press tap, we have more possibilities to do. The same with the elements. We can split the element and we can move an element. The same can happen uh, with the macro area, with the areas category. To switch to the areas category, this can be done by using the, the right mouse uh, button and change here to the area category or use the shortcut Q to switch between these two categories, elements and areas. Uh, we will work a lot of with shortcuts. Here again, if we hover over the node, by pressing the left mouse, we can delete the hot points. If the perimeter is highlighted uh, with right mouse button, we can decrease the number of edges on a perimeter, or if we hover over the perimeter with shortcut 2, we can increase it, and of course, we can decrease it again. Hover over the perimeter, we can join it, and we can again release it. Hover over the macro right mouse button, we can use some functionalities from here inside, for example, four-sided to create a map block, uh, a four-sided mesh. For the beginning, until the user learns how to deal with a direct edit, the function assistant on the left side can be switched on-off. One of the new functions regarding the cell mesh toolset is the brush. This mesh improvement function, while working with direct, have a new brush way of picking 
elements calling it with the right mouse button or with shortcut B. I use the shortcut B. The user drags over these elements. And according what is selected inside the brush, here we have selected the smooth. Using the tap, we can switch to different algorithms, for example, reconstruct. And the mesh is improved. According how many entities user wants to select, he can change the brush diameter from the options list or increase it with shortcut 2 or shortcut 1. So let's start to improve this small example file. Uh, and I will show you how fast and easy this batch mesh result can be improved using the direct edit. I will start with the category uh, areas. I go here and change the number of edges. I switch with shortcut Q to the next category elements. I move the trias. Here we have two trias. I will, we are drag and drop, remove it. I change the position of the trier. Directly, I can pick a node and can move it. I can switch with shortcut Q to the category areas and join this perimeter. With shortcut Q, switch back to the element category and move this trier. Let's improve this area. I switch back to the category areas and I will join the perimeters. I can join perimeters by clicking one by one, or if I hover over the perimeter, right mouse button, and I have the join multiple selection. I can select more than one perimeter to join. And now I can go directly to the right mouse button and call the origin. The brush is enabled. I switch to origin and hover over these elements to bring all the nodes to the origin state back. If I'm satisfied about the result, I can proceed to this area, to this feature. Let's improve this feature. Go back to the category elements with shortcut Q. We are drag and drop. I move these trias. I can join this uh, edge or I can create a path using drag and drop. I can move the trier on this area. I can use the right mouse button to call the reconstruct functionality. Directly, we are drag and drop, improve this mesh. If you want, you can paste these nodes. With shortcut B, you can call the brush, change it to smooth, and this uh, feature is improved according to our needs. Now, I switch to the draw mode feature. Here, we see the features in different colors. I go to the category area and now if I hover over a feature it is highlighted what I can do I can copy to the neighbor one via track and drop if the cross is green I can copy it now we have the same mesh result and I can directly go here and pick to the fillet for a direct treatment and set two rows of number of this fillet Directly, I can go to the whole treatment and set here also to create a zone. And I go back to the element category and I can swap the trias far from the perimeter.
we can using the drag and drop to remove these trials. Of course, you can also choose the uh, multiple uh, splitting and then join this uh, edges. In this area, we can remove this trial and this can be moved here. As you can see, so fast and so easy, this uh, mesh result can be improved only using the direct edit and has focus in the middle of the screen. Let's switch to the second topic, the casting. Uh, what is new especially for casting? First of all, the existing tool casting and extrusion was merged into one and renamed generate in this one. Here inside we have two, uh, two tools, the casting and the extrusion. I have already run this uh, casting and we can directly start to improve this result. Here we have a tab with uh, features, with holes treatment. I have set it some holes uh, treatment and this is the first result what we get after casting. The already described new direct edit functionality is also functional and specially adapted to casting, taking into account the align entities, which we call them now constraints. New functionalities to help the user to speed up his process are also available. Let's give a short introduction in the new casting improvement way using only the direct edit functionality and calling the contents list with the right mouse button from the screen to call all necessary functions that are needed for the improvement. Our goal is to minimize the mouse movements and have focus only to the screen area. Before we start, let's show you one of the new functionalities called Middle Mesh Inspect. This one. The scope of this new function is to check the middle mesh with respect to the constraints in the solid description file. In this case, we check the first result after casting to visualize possible errors and also as a final check to see if everything is fine. User selects cell and faces for which the checks will be performed. In the options list on the left side, uh, options are provided to select which checks the user would like to run and to define the tolerances. Here we will check the middle surface deviation, the thickness deviation, the boundary deviation, missing mass. So I press OK. And all the possible errors are visualized in different corners on the left corner according to the errors. If I switch off the geometry, we see some errors in our model. So here in this area, uh, here we miss a lot of mass, some empty areas here, some empty areas on this side. So now I have a, a small overview. I will switch off the inspect and I start to improve my model. How? Using the direct edit. I go to the direct edit functionality in the toolset middle mesh, of course, and go directly to the category area. Here we do the same drag and drop macro to this one. If I hover over the macro, it is highlighted. If I hover over the perimeter, it is highlighted. And if I hover over a node, it is highlighted and I can execute different actions. You will see it in uh, further actions. I can select more than one macro for dragging by pressing control button.
So now, if I hover over the hot points, I can delete these hot points. If I have more than one or two, right mouse click and say delete multiple and use a box selection to delete all these hot points. Now, if you hover over the perimeter, you can right mouse click, say nodes number, increase it, or use the shortcut. The shortcut is two. Great. Now let's paste these gaps. For this, we switch with the shortcut Q to the category elements and start to paste these nodes. Automatically, these are in the middle. So, if I hover over these entities, this triangle is highlighted, right mouse click, delete. Switch back to the category areas and join these perimeters. And now, as you can see, if I hover over this uh, area and I activate the draw cell solid, you see that the nodal thickness is not right uh, calculated because of the light uh, uh, false alignment. How we can improve it, uh, improve it? Right mouse click, change constraint, edit. Deselect this one, deselect this one. Here the same, right mouse click, change constraint, edit. You see the shortcut A. And if I activate the dorsal solid, the nodal thickness calculation is correct. Let's go to another uh, area here. Here we saw earlier that we lose, lose a lot of material. For this, I activate my geometry. I go to a function in the solid mesh group named O Junction Auto. Automatically, cylindrical shapes are recognized and I can create Texas solids, shells, with gap or without gap. And according my global mesh parameter, we have created um, solids. So I activated now my inspect functionality, activate my geometry, and run again this check. Now we see some of the checks are removed, also removed from the legend, and we have here empty area, we go to the category areas, join this perimeter, automatically the error is uh, removed from the legend. And here again, we have an empty perimeter, right mouse button, change constraint, in, sorry, not in print. Edit to this face. Also, this error is removed from the legend join this one. So now we, this perimeter is not on the right middle. We can, by pressing control, select more than one perimeters, right mouse click, new imprint between these cones and this one. And press OK. So now we are correctly on the middle. And the only one error is here on this side. right mouse click, edit. So the inspect is removed totally from the legend because now our model are completely clean from errors. Let's go to, <clears throat> to show you more new functionalities to help the user to speed up his process. And here we have new functions. The first one is the trim functionality. This function removes the exceeding area faces and officials of a macro. Here, for example, if I select this uh, area, automatically it is detected. And if I press in OK, this area is 
improved. Of course, first of all, what I do is to run the inspect function to, to see and to locate possible errors. And in this case, we have a lot of missing mass, ribs, rib, small ribs and grease. How we can recreate it very easy and very fast. And of course, recreate and connect it very fast. I will switch off this inspect function. Go here and we will use a new function uh, called middle mesh manual from site. The middle mesh can be easily created in the middle position by manually selecting the sides of the solid description. This one, this one. ANSA automatically creates constraints on the created area and the thickness is also right aligned. After the middle creation, the area needs to be connected with the main body. For this, we use the new connect function here in the group modify connect. This new function helps the user to connect caps quickly and easy. The connection is done by filling the gap with shell elements using um, project, sorry, using project method or extent method. In our case, we use the extent method. And it is connected. As we can realize, we have here, according to the color, we have here empty perimeters. I go to my category areas, hover over this perimeter, right mouse click, change, constraint, face, and I add this perimeter to this face. Now we can also use the classic improve functionality outside the direct edit and improve this mesh. The nodal thickness calculation is correct. Here we lose some small ribs. Here we have the function manual from top. Here we have two options, base, middle cells and bottom faces. Base, middle cells means that we have a base, in our case, middle mesh, we use this one, and we select also the top faces and press OK. Automatically elements are created with the correct nodal thickness. The only one we have to do only on this version is to connect it. In the next versions, this will be done fully automatically. So also done. So we can activate the inspect function again, the geometry, right mouse and run at this area. And as we can see, here we have everything fine. So let's locate on this area. Here we go again to the man function manual from top and we choose the target bottom faces to recreate this grease. Here I select also the top of this grease. result is created. What we have to do is to connect. How? With the new connect functionality. Connect this one, connect this one, this one, very fast and very easy. We can here as target select two cells.
we go back to visit the cells. We go to the direct edit and paste this um, node. We can call directly the brush and hover over this element to reconstruct it. And of course, you can run again your inspect um, tool to see if everything is fine. And as you can see, only at this area we lose material. So let's go to the last uh, function, to the last one, is the inherit tool. The inherit function is inside the generate tool, here, inside. The ability to inherit the mesh from a different design version to a casting model is now added. This means that the new casting part does not need to be casted and improved from new if there are small differences. The algorithm is so smart to recognize and keep the same areas from the old casting model and cast only the differences. What this means for the user, less time and effort. All the different problems are categorized and appear on the left side on our screen. I have already run it. This is the result what we see. Everything as you see in color blue is the old model, the result from the old model, and we have to prepare only these areas. As you see here, some very, very small differences. Also, we can locate it if we run the inspect functionality. Here, the, the movement in the new incoming geometry is very, very small. What we can do, deactivate the geometry, call the brush functionality, and hover over these elements. Automatically, these entities are repositioned to the new position. If I activate the draw series solid, you can see that the position is now correct. Let's switch off the inspect and cancel the this one. So this area are imprinted from the old one. We are drag and drop. We can remove it. Right mouse click, four-sided mesh, and of course, directly right mouse click to say uh, sorry, yes, uh, four-sided mesh is executed. So what we have to do as next is to connect these ribs to the main body. How? With the new connect functionality. Delete this one. We can run the inspect function again. So now, if I hover over this element, I can say to this area, exclude from inspect, exclude from inspect. And as you can see, the shortcut from exclude from the check is the I. So I am sure that all these are correct and I exclude it from the check. And now I know exactly that. This is the area, the only one what I have to prepare. How to prepare? Delete these areas. Fill this hole. Prepare this area. For what? Now we can use the di uh, drag and drop to create here a cut and to create a function like fill to create here um, entities. Doesn't matter how it looks. After joining this perimeter, 
and after joining this hot point and after drag and drop this small perimeter and using the right mouse click in say four-sided mesh this mesh is new created this area sorry with the right nodal thickness calculation and everything is fine so that, that's all for the 30 minutes thank you for uh, watching and follow this live demo